Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video has been a long time coming. It is probably the craziest video I ever made in terms of how many different slices and the time and editing that I had to do. But this has been an idea of mine and something that I have wanted to do since one of my very first 200 pound boxes. So I knew that my last order was going to be filled with Target just based on watching other unboxings, knowing that ThreadUp no longer takes and the H&M and, and Forever 21, Old Navy, all of that. And my local buy sell trade stores have really stepped up their game in terms of pricing and just the things I'm finding in the stores. And so I thought if I could order one of these bulk boxes, gather myself and take almost all of the items that came in these boxes to the buy sell trade stores specifically to trade in, leave with better inventory that I'm excited to list and hire in brands that maybe it would be worth it until, you know, there's these boxes are no longer filled with Target. So even though, yes, I do believe a lot of the items that you saw me unbox, all of the brand new with tag sweaters and such, I do think I could have recouped more money had I sold these things online myself. And I do have another 200 pound bulk box on the way to me. And I do think if there are new with tags, the Target, the Universal Thread, all of that, I will keep and list myself. But for this particular project, I took every single thing except for the higher end brands. I do have one entire tub of things to list still that I have not touched. I didn't want to skew the results. So if it was Target, it went. So this video is a little bit longer than my typical videos and I wanted to jump on future Amanda and just kind of let you know the way it will play out. So I ended up going to the buy sell trade four times and a couple of the segments might get a little boring, but I know for me, I like to know what buy sell trades are taking. So I will, will be reading from my receipt, telling you which items I took, how much I made, uh, because if you're somebody that maybe goes to the bins, you definitely don't want to do this style of sourcing and trading unless your item, your cost of goods are quite low. My cost of goods was just over a dollar per item for these. So I knew that my goal for buy sell trade stores is to earn two to three dollars per item. So we're gonna start out the video. I uh, first went to Plato's, then we took a trip to Style Encore. There was a delay because we had a hurricane, so it was just kind of taking a while. We went back to Plato's uh, because I was kind of surprised at how well I did there, as you'll see. And then I ended up at Close Mentor. I thought that would be the final stop, but I thought what a way to end this video. I didn't want any of those items that I put aside for buy, sell, trade. I didn't want any of them to come back into my house because I wanted to finish out this project just seeing how much can I recoup by listing nothing, okay? So every single piece that was left over that the buy sell trade stores did not take, I sent off to thread up in a Gap partner kit. So the last segment of this video, I will screen share and show you what they took and how much I made. And then all in all, did I recoup my $404.70 just from buy sell trades? And here's another fun thing. Um, I picked up, I will show you the few pieces of inventory I picked up at two, two of the stores and a few of those items have already sold and, and it, they've been listed for like less than a week. So um, pay attention to those numbers and all the times you hear the obnoxious, yay, that means it's an, I sold the item. It's not, a, I'm not showing you a comp that is my listing that has sold. So do keep in mind at the end when I give you my totals, I'm not figuring the profits from those but uh, you will see, I definitely sold some items that I was able to pick up using the money from trading these items in, gave me much bigger returns on my investment than if I had sold the um, universal thread sweater, for example. So I hope you guys find this useful. I hope that if you happen to have a lot of buy, sell trades in your area, maybe this will be more of a enticement for you to pick up the 200 pound bulk box uh, because I do think there is value there. I do think that um, in my experience, a lot of the items simply need to go through the washer. That's it. Even some of the higher end, you know, they have deodorant marks or they have need a couple of threads trimmed and thread up is not going to do any of that. So you can find some amazing things in these boxes. So let's head to uh, Amanda of the past and see how I did taking these items from those two videos to the buy sell trade store. I did learn something at Plato's Closet if you, before you accept a trade, that's when you have to ask for an itemized receipt and they'll print out the super long receipt that tells you the brand. 
my husband went back to pick this up for me. He didn't know to do that. I didn't either, but they let him take a photo of it. So I'm going to be looking at my computer screen just so to give you an idea of the brand and how much the payout is. And then I'm, I'm gonna go through some of that. I'm gonna tell you the totals, which I'm shocked. It's actually been like the best Play-Doh's trip I've ever had. And then I'll show you the couple pieces I picked up. We'll cut. He's actually gone to Style Encore for me today. We only have one at the moment. One's in the process of moving. I chose to go with Style Encore just because I, I just literally do not have the time to shop. And so we're just gonna take the cash. And all right, so the by now you will have watched the first two videos. My grand total was $404.70. That made my cost of goods $1.33 a piece. So I'm really trying to see how much of that $404 I can make simply by going. Now, when he gets back from Style Encore, you know, there are a few things that I just didn't know which store would take it. You know, is it more mature? Is it not? Especially the Target brands. I will say that. Play-Dohs took every single piece of Target that I took them, except for the Massimo, because that's old. They don't even make that anymore. If you remember, there were a few exhilaration pieces. Specifically, I remember a pair of new with tags, little running shorts. I think the date was like 2013, but it was new with the tags, so I left all of the tags intact. They took those. So the most that I got paid out on were those Wild Fable the, and A New Day, I believe, that were the really chunky sweaters from Target. All right, yeah, so a new day, just a random long sleeve shirt. I got $4.55, a Hollister sweater, $4.90. They took all of the Walmart, the no boundaries and such. No boundaries, plain pants, I got $3.25. An SO, which is Kohl's shirt, I got $1.65. Plain old no boundaries tank tops, there were a few of those. I got $1.30. Copper key, those random, I believe they were like a size five or seven jeans, I got $4. Um, they took all of the no name, like those weird bodysuits and stuff, $2.10, $2.28, $1.30, which are the prices to be expected. Windsor was the brand, couldn't find a poncho, I got $2.92. Now this says other brand. So there was just a random denim pair of jeans, $4.90. They took the Brandy Melville items. I got $4 for each of those. Uh, a Wild Fable heavy new sweater. Um, they basically say what it is, heavy sweater. And then underneath it says the brand and the size. So it's pretty great breakdown. It was a size small. I got $8.80, which Honestly, if I had sold the Wild Fable sweaters myself, I probably would have sold them for $15 to $20 on Poshmark. I'm happy with the $8.80 and I because I didn't have to package them, ship them, use my labels, ink, all of that. Um, a little short, no boundaries dress, $2.45. Another Wild Fable sweater, this one was not new. I got $3.15. I won't read all of them, but just, you know, it's anywhere between two to five dollars seems to be what I was getting for most of these items. The in extra small long sleeve, three dollars and fifteen cents. They took basically I brought two huge tubs. I did not count all of the items because by the time I realized I wanted to count them, everything was already folded and shoved so nicely because I didn't want more than two bins. Less than half of one bin left. So there were a lot of really thick items. They took those Fashion Nova new with tags jeans. I did look up comps. I wasn't going to make much selling them myself. I made $6.84. A Time and True cardigan, I made $7.20. Vided H&M, literally a big jacket. I got $10 for that. So that was my highest payout other than the few $8. Grand total, they took 62 items, which is a lot and I got $230.09, which breaks out to $3.71 per piece, which is, that's higher than what I hope to get from Style Encore. If you've watched me before, you know um, when I take things to Once Upon a Child, Play-Doh, Style Encore, my goal when I average out per piece how much I made is to get $1, $2, and $3. So for Play-Dohs, because it's the lower end brands, the tween, young 20s items, my goal is $2 a piece and I almost doubled that. So out of my $404, just going one time to the buy, sell trade, I made back $230 and nine cents. And I think that's great. So while I was there, I, I only picked up six items. I did pay up for them. I This is one that I got to keep. 
This is a spirit jersey from Universal. Remember, I'm here in Orlando. We find these type of things awesome. But how cool is this? It's camo. I got this for my son for Christmas. So that's one thing I got to keep. I, they have a lot of Lululemon. These happen to be on clearance. They marked them at $30. I paid $15, which I only got them because I like to have Lulu in my closet. These are the groovy run shorts. They are a size 4 but um, these seem to be a more harder to find color. And we'll just have to see how much I can get for them. Pumps were definitely all over the place, but I don't think I'll have a problem selling them. And the brands they have at Play-Dohs are so random. I don't consider Lou and Gray. And I mean, they had a lot of like just more mature brands. So that's why I'm going to take anything that Style Encore doesn't take back to them. This is Lou and Gray, new with the tags, a large dress. I picked this up. It's got some like purples and blues. It's just so soft, so pretty, like a swing style dress. Uh, they wanted six dollars. It was twelve dollars, but on clearance, so I paid six dollars, and I know I will be able to sell that. This, if you know, I just love Disney. I had to have this. Somebody will love this. It is Disney Parks official. It says a pug. What does it say? A pug is all you need instead of a hug. Um, it's got Walt Disney World on the back. I mean, I just loved it. And sometimes, you know, I find myself, I want to list items if I think they're fun. This I definitely paid too much for, but I love buying and selling. Patagonia, they wanted $25 or no, $22 for this. But remember, I didn't pay taxes because I traded in. That's how this store works. Um, it's just one of those, These I think this is a better sweater something like that I will find officially but I'm not gonna make a ton of profit on this but you know the whole point of this was to trade the crap I didn't want to list for stuff that excited me and things I did want to list and then these were probably the best find these are vans but they are Toy Story vans and they are in a fantastic condition they were definitely worn a few times look this is the best part how fun. I thought they were a five, but they're an eight in women's. And these are going anywhere from 50 to $100. Uh, the Toy Story ones always seem to, to do that. I, this is what I paid $25 for. Hopefully that ends up working out. So I only have five items to now list, which is so much less overwhelming than two full tubs. So I will be back. All right, I am back. It's actually only like 30 minutes later than the previous portion, but Michael got home from Style Encore. This one, he asked, they give, you don't get tax-free, no percent off an item. You don't get any benefit for trading in, so it was fine to not. So I found it interesting. Um, I saw him bringing the tubs back in. He took two like overflowing tubs. They only took 27 items, which I will go over with you quickly. But he said, you know, they always give you a reason why they don't take things. Their reason was they have a ton of inventory right now, which makes sense being that I'm in Orlando and it is the only style encore other than maybe an hour and a half drive to the beach either direction. And also today is September, what is today? 22nd, I think. They said they're not taking, I had a lot of sweaters, if you remember all of those. I took the Universal Thread and Wild Fable to Play-Dohs. I put all of the A New Day in this bin even though they're very similar styles. They were all new with tags, they were great. I thought for sure those would be the only items they would take. They said they're not taking sweaters until October the 1st, even though today is technically the first day of fall. We don't have fall here, guys. Like it's literally still 95 degrees outside, but that was their reasoning. And so, but what I find interesting is the very first thing on my printout of what they took was a coat from Time and True, a Walmart coat. And then as, as we go through, um, they took other sweaters. So it's fine. What I have done is I've already quickly, it took me about 10 minutes, went through the bin, put all of the Target, all of the things that I think Play-Dohs might actually take into a second Play-Dohs tub. And I'm gonna go back to the Play-Dohs I went to already with all of the, the stuff they didn't take the first time, plus all of this stuff, just because it's really close to my house. I go grocery shopping near there. It's not really out of the way. So that will be in this video. We're gonna go there one more time because I always say you should go to at least two different stores at least two times before giving up. And I'll report back on that and see how we do there. I have a feeling they'll take a lot more of that stuff. So the 27 items they took, a Marona skirt, which 
I just got done saying that that style or Play-Dohs didn't take Morona. And I will tell you that in all of the Target items, if it wasn't 2019, 2021, 22, I cut out the date tag. Morona is old and they took it. So, and it was a skirt. Thank goodness I don't have it. I got a whopping dollar and 80 cents. But remember, what was my cost of goods was, was low, like a dollar or something. A Japna tank top, a New Day long skirt, a boutique brand tank top, a Banana Republic sweater. So they took a sweater. I got $3.90 for that. A uh, Time and True skirt, divided H&M cardigan, Lauren Conrad sleeveless, a skirt from The Limited. Got $3.60 for that. An Ava and Viv sleeveless tank. I got a dollar even. Dollar twenty-five for Universal Threads tank. A New Day dress, three dollars and sixty cents. Old Navy tank top, seventy-five cents. It was an extra small. A Banana Republic size medium a sweater kimono, three dollars and ninety cents. Three dollars for a Morona coat. So they took more Morona. Uh, an Apartment Nine heavy coat, eight dollars and forty cents. Divided H and M skirt. $1.80. So buy, sell, trade stores are still buying skirts. I can't give them away online. A Universal Threads t-shirt, $1.50. Another Universal Threads t-shirt, same size, same color, $1.25 for that one. And $1.50 again for another A New Day t-shirt. I must have had three or three t-shirts. I don't know. A Marona blazer, which I remember this was a vibrant red blazer that I actually had to put through the washer. I had to lint roll it. I felt like I spent a little bit, way too much time on it, thinking it's Morona. They're not going to take it. They did, and I got $3. Pleon sleeveless tank, $2.70. That L peplum black tank, $1.75. Boutique brand shorts, $2.70. And an H&M dress, size extra small, $2.40. So I made $67.85. Honestly, my husband dropped them off. He had to go to Tractor Supply, which is right next door. And so it really wasn't out of our way. He walked out with $67.85. I told him he could keep the change. That was his tip. So he kept the 87 cents. So all in all, at this moment, I sold 62 to Play-Dohs, 27 to Style Encore. I am at $297.94. It's taken some time, but what it has taken is space and patience. It's a lot of inventory. So I will be back here in a minute. Let me know if you guys like this format. I know I like to know what type of things these stores are taking. Um, and, and maybe you find that helpful. Of course, every store is going to be different. But hopefully the Play-Dohs doesn't do me wrong again. And I will make my goal is to make at least. So, you know, I'm about a hundred about $106 off of making all my money back. Now remember, I kept a laundry basket full of stuff for myself and I have an overflowing tub of things to list. If I could make back almost all of that $100, like make back all my money and making my inventory and what I kept for myself, I gave my mom a few pieces, I gave my mother-in-law a few pieces, that would be fantastic, right? It's just, then essentially would be free inventory with a couple hours of work it took me and I got some YouTube videos out of it. So, all right, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, future Amanda, again, this is so fun. I kind of like this, but I had to go back. It's been like two, maybe three weeks because we had a hurricane happen and it kind of slowed down the mojo of taking all this stuff to the various stores. But right before everything shut down, Michael took... I had to watch the last clip really quickly. He took that stuff that Style Encore did not take, based all of it, and took those two bins to Play-Dohs, uh, the same Play-Dohs we went to the first time because he had to go back. I think Home Depot is what's next door to that one. Anyway, at the same time, this, this one, again, doesn't give you like a discount or there's no benefit to spending the money there. So I told him, whatever they take, take the cash. At the same time, I went across town with my mom and grabbed the... Uh, some of the cash that I had from the first time, the first two times, Play-Dohs and Style Encore. So I think I took like a hundred bucks with me. I knew we were going to go grocery shopping and I popped into a thrift store next door. I'm going to show you what I picked up with that cash, which was kind of the whole point, right? Even though I didn't spend it in the buy-sell trade store, I'm still using this money to hopefully turn this 200 pounds into even more profit by selling what they sent me to buy, sell, trade, and using that money either in those stores or elsewhere. So quickly, I will just go over the Play-Dohs. Uh, they, he took two tub fulls and they ended up taking 17 items. And as expected, um, they took all of those sweaters. 
that the other store did not take. Uh, Alia, A-L-Y-A, um, that is, most of this stuff is the stuff that uh, Style Encore didn't take. I don't know if they took anything that they didn't take the first time. I, I just didn't go through the stuff that detailed. But Alia is sold at Francesca's. I got $7.20 for just an open kimono. Wild Fable Short Alls, $3.25. A Forever 21 Bodysuit, $2.80. They did take Fabletics Pants with no size, $3.50. A Time and True Long Sleeve, $2.80. Universal Thread Sweater, $3.15. A New Day Sweater, $4.20. Random No Brand Dress, $3.15. An Abercrombie & Fitch sweater dress, $4.90. They did not take that the first time because I definitely put that in that bin. It was a very tight fitting dress. I did not take that to style on core. So that's an example of making five bucks by taking the same item to the same location a week apart. Just depends on who's looking at your items. Another kimono, a new day, $4, a new day long sleeve, $3.25. No, two a new day sweaters got $4.90 and a bound Short sleeve shirt to tend, uh, unbranded dress to 80, and a new day dress $4.20. So they took 17 items and I got $64.35. And quickly now I'm gonna show you what I then went and spent. I purchased 10 items and I spent $53.48. So I definitely am still in the profit of my cash. I was very excited to find these on cloud shoes. Uh, they were, they wanted $14.91. This is one of those stores where they price things, whatever the heck they want, which I don't like, but I do find great stuff here. Um, it's not like all the shirts are $5 or whatever, but these were um, either 30 or 50% off. So I was fine to pay that. Is that a pair of Birkenstocks that I've never seen this style before? They're like a suede. This stuff, of course, has not been processed. Needs a little bit of suede brushing, but these are in fantastic condition other than just being a little dusty. But yeah, never found, I did not even know they made closed toed shoes. Uh, these are a pair of Girlfriend Collective, which I have heard of, but I've never found it. So I picked these up really just to try out for myself. They wanted $2.98 and that was a half off color. So I figured for $1.50, um, and honestly for these items that I got, I'm probably going to average my cost of goods, uh, except for the on clouds because everything was like around the same price. Um, these actually included, I got a pair of uh, workout shorts for myself that were also a dollar fifty. This I paid five dollars for, which might be too much, but I love buying for myself and selling vineyard vines. Uh, and this is like a performance squirt. So it's a size large also. I don't need any more squirts. Squirts are my favorite, but so I did pick this up to sell. Just a couple more items. These I also got for personal use, but I left them in the bag to show you. These are, these were a dollar and 98 cents. These are jazz shoes and they're my daughter's size up size and we are getting pretty close. Dance shoes are not cheap. And as you can see, like they're usually not worn for very long because kids feet grow. So I do not, purchase brand new shoes except for sometimes right before the recital if they need to size up anyway but it's very rare i get them at thrift stores once upon a child i'm always picking them up i have a bag full of size ups all right this is a brand i'm here all the time but i have not picked them up before it's hotter which is just another comfort brand but comfort brands sell and i just thought these were really cute for a comfort shoe i liked the little um flower detail there they need a little conditioning but I thought those were really cute. These I only got because they were new with the tag and I just thought they were kind of fun. They, there's a, a, I noticed at first before I even noticed the brand, I'm like, oh, that looks like a Mickey head. Remember I'm in Orlando, I do find a lot of Disney stuff. And indeed, then I looked inside and saw the castle. So these are Disney parks. And then I saw, I thought this was just the, the store's tag, but they are brand new. Disney Parks official merchandise size a women's 10 and they had them at five bucks and they were the color of the week. These are a pair of Merrill, just kind of like Tiva style little sandals, but they were in a really great condition. 
And lastly, this was the first thing I saw when I walked into the store and I was like, this is gonna be a good day. These are another pair of Birkenstocks and another style that I've not seen. How fun are these? They actually are Birkies by Birkenstock. Um, they are size 39. These literally look brand new. And they wanted $9.98. And again, this was the color of the week. So 53 bucks for all of that. Not too shabby. I feel like just maybe two pairs, maybe even one pair, I don't know, of the Burks will pay for that. So, all right, I will be back and go from there. All right, see you in a minute. I have gone to close Mentor, but before I do this little segment, I wanted to let you know I said this would be the final chapter, but I did a few days ago send out a thread up gap partner kit with the remnants of everything that the buy sell trade stores did not take and I want to include that because I mean it is technically money even though I'm going to get gap money to then buy stuff for my kids or whatever but I think it'd be fun I'll do a screen share and show you the items that thread up took and what my payout was on those I went to close mentor this makes the fourth stop for these items now to recap I went to Play-Doh's went to Style Encore, Style Encore took like hardly anything, took those items and then the original ones that Play-Dohs didn't want back to the same Play-Dohs. You will have seen all of that. It's a type of store where it is in your better interest to do a trade in because they give you 20% more to trade in your items and then they keep like a bank for you. So for example, I will tell you, they took 38 items and they, were, they offered me cash $75.75 or $90.90 if I spent it in the store. So I opted to shop around. I did not spend all of the money, so I do still have a running total. It's right next door to my favorite Once Upon a Child, so I will definitely be back. Um, but I want to just, I'm not going to go through everything, but Close Mentor, if you happen to have one, they really liked the Banana Republic, all of the Target stuff that the other places didn't take. Like I see five a new day in a row. They like dip. They took the two or three dip items, which I think are sold at Dee Dee's Discounts, Walmart. Uh, let's see, they took Old Navy, Halogen, Express, Sanctuary, Universal Thread, Universal Thread, Knox Rose. So they like that Target. Forever 21, dip again. I had more than two dip. All in Motion. Morona, which is old, and they took that, they took a Derek Hart top, which I felt like that was Junior's, and they took that Angie top that nobody else wanted. So I was very pleased with that. Um, they're just kind of cranky in there. I don't know, it's not my favorite place to go, but since that's my only other option, since our style encore near my house is still under construction. So I wanted to show you guys the five items that I brought home, but this has been so fun, and seeing these numbers is what made me buy again, and it was on sale. So. Check these really cute Olakai's out. I did check comps. These are going for like maybe $40, something like that. They're really cute. Olakai's have the back that bends down. Uh, this It is quite expensive to shop here, but you know, with, I had credit, so I needed to buy things. So I did pay $14.99 for these, but they're like in new condition. And honestly, this is what my Goodwill is charging for shoes these days. I did pick up a pair of Vionics. This is my set. These are nine, the Tiffany style. Um, these were $9.99, which again is goodwill pricing. These are my size. They're really cute. So, and they match some of my Lily. I might actually keep these, but the bird goes out. All right, three more pieces. This is a bra. It is, who are you? Athleta. It says power of she. I don't know. It literally is in like new condition. It's a medium, I thought it was cute. I think it will sell, the back is really cute. Another bra, this is Zaya, which I, a lot of resellers talk about how awesome this brand is. It's one. It's a, like a from home business. I've picked up a few pieces and I really can't move them. So I don't know, maybe I'm not getting the right stuff, but this is the white polka adjustable strappy bra. It's an extra large, it was new with the tag. I thought, what the heck? I needed something <laughs> to show for. Uh, where's the little moon is their logo and then the last piece this kind of reminds me of scrubs but I, it kind of spoke to me comps were good it's brand new with a tag athleta retailed for 129 dollars that's insane this is the levitate poplin tee it feels really nice I really like the sleeves 
So we'll see. It's a size small, but I am more of a large and this would definitely fit me. It was definitely an oversized. How many times can I say definitely? Okay. I know this video is getting long, but I feel like this is one that you guys are going to like. Let's recap. I've already told you all the totals from the others and I will probably at the very, very end after Gap do a little thing here and show you. So $90 I got today from Close Mentor. That did, I didn't tell you 38 items that worked out to $2.39 per piece, which is actually my lowest. I was at $371, $251, $379, and $239 with Play-Dohs coming in for the top two, which is crazy. So all in all, da -da -da, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. This is exciting to me, friends, because I have not, <laughs> I have not listed a single piece that I kept. I have a full Rubbermaid tote of items to list. So to me, I could get at least 20 bucks per piece for those things. I've not listed any of them as of when I'm filming this. I paid in total for this 200 pound box, $404.70. That worked out to $1.33 per piece. I went to the buy sell trade four times. Now I spent gas, I spent time, I did trade-ins. You know, it, it is a lot of work, but just the four buy sell trade stores, I made $453.19. Now we'll see, I'll I expect to get another like 40 bucks for the gap, maybe. I can't remember exactly what I sent them, it might have just been junk. But maybe around that, I'll get something. And then I have a whole bin of stuff to list. So I went from an absurd, 200 pounds is a lot, I condensed it down to something more manageable. You know, my husband is in videos. He helps me with the taxes. He does help me with shipping, but I do, I don't have an assistant. I do all the photographing, all the listing, all the cross listing. I do all of that myself. So 200 pounds is just, is too much. And to get that down to one manageable tote. Now the problem is if I just kept it at one revolving tote, but I don't, I have like 15 totes. That's a story for another day. Uh, I feel like this box is worth it. Even though they've got the Lululemon box, they've got the Banana Republic box, you're not getting the designer brands that we used to get in these big bulk boxes because now ThreadUp got greedy and they want to take all the good stuff out and sell them separately. But I do still think that there is money to be had. Now, tons of these items, these 140, to tell you, it was 144 items total that Buy, Sell, Trade took from me. Oh, 305 items I got total between the, the boxes. So 305 minus 144. That means I still have 161 items. Some went to thread up, but I probably personally kept 100 items to list or keep for myself, which is crazy. I know I didn't donate. I donated some, so somewhere around that number. They took about half, 152 pieces would have been half. So they took about half of the things that came in and I made all my money back, plus an extra almost $50. Yes, an extra $50. So is it worth it? I think so, yes. If you have a husband or a partner or maybe you're single and they don't mind you having crap for your reselling business, basically everywhere. In every room of the house, there is some sort of, oh, Amanda was here. So there you have it. Please stay tuned though, because I am not going to make this video live until I get, even if they only give me 10 bucks, I do want to show you what uh, ThreadUp ended up taking and give you the grand, grand total. Give us, now's your chance. Give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment. I'll see you again in one second. All right, guys, this is my kit. I was able to earn $64.88. But because I chose Gap, they always give you an extra 15%, which is fantastic. So I got $74.61. Now remember, these were the leftovers, the junk, if you will, that the buy, sell, trade stores did not take all four chances that these items had to be taken. And now could I have sold any of these myself and made a little more? I don't know, maybe, but that's not what this experiment was. So all in all, it was 27 items, which was still quite a great payout per piece. Still gave me profit. So this was a roller coaster dress, $2.10. Rampage, this was super old. This was one of those items that was vintage, but in my opinion, not in a good way. But hey, $2.28, basically doubled my money. Old Navy Maternity, $4.20, which actually surprised me. It was an older piece. My buy, sell, trades 
don't typically take maternity, even though they have a maternity section. They don't ever buy it from me. Ann Taylor Factory, just a totally basic shirt, $1.17. Calvin Klein, this dress, Calvin Klein dresses will do well, but I feel like they always sell for a lot on ThreadUp. If you send them in a normal kit, you can price them up. I have sold Calvin Klein dresses for $40 to $50. I just don't want to wait an entire year by sending things in the old-fashioned way. So I took my $8.00. This express dress, $2.10. Gap maternity again, $1.17. Gianni Benny, $1.89. Love Stitch, $0.63, cents, which yes, I technically lost money, but to be honest with you, this was going to be donated. This is not a brand that I would have listed, so I was happy to see that ThreadUp took it. Banana Republic Factory, just super basic black pants, $1.17. This Lulu's dress, I couldn't get anyone to take from me, so $2.46. And it wasn't the type of Lulu's dress that is selling on Poshmark. Another pair of Banana Republic pants, $1.70. I had a lot of black pants. Ann Taylor, loft casual pants, $1.89. This New York and Company dress was like, not, not anything that was going to be selling to anyone trendy, but hey, they took it for $2.10. This, this was one item. I did not count this um, in my totals. I actually took it out. Um, this cotton kids dress came in a thread up box, but I randomly just tossed it in. Uh, the, this casual dress from Zara, 189. Dahlia pants, 228. Talbot short sleeve button up, 228. Express shirt, 75 cents. Amanda and Chelsea, more, two more pairs of black pants, 134 and 210. Roz and Allie cardigan. 134 blue pepper pants 266 this is assorted brands and um it was one of those things where it just had like an amazon tag but i got two dollars and 85 cents another fate i don't even know the brand 228 this adidas pullover had a little stain on it they still took it gave me 372 you can always count on thread up to take your lularoe 285 so th those were the items that they took out of my kit and gave me 74 dollars all right, so that's it. You have seen my profits from the buy sell trade stores. You have seen what ThreadUp took back. And that's so exciting, right? What do I have? Like $70 to spend. And I will be doing that the first week of December so I can use my Gap Cash that I earned the last time I used a gift card. So it's just a constant revolving. This is how I buy. Um, you know, we're coming into winter here in Florida. Uh, my kids, I'll pick them up some beanies, maybe a hat, some jeans, uh, a jacket. Uh, but using these Gap gift cards is how I'm basically dressing my kids for free. And then Gap is one of those brands that I do always take to Once Upon a Child. And then it's a revolving, you know, I get things to sell and the process just keeps going. So all in all, my numbers, this box cost me $404.70. And that was full price. I know they recently had a sale on them, but that was like the full price box. And just from the four buy, sell, trade times, it was one of the stores I went twice, but the four different events, I made $453.19. So I was already in the profit, $48.49, just from going to buy, sell, trade stores. Now I only, you know, I, I had stuff left over. Could I have gone back? I wanted this project to be done. So I took those items, shoved them in a box, sent them within like eight days. I had a Gap gift card in my email for $74.61. And so at this moment, I have not listed a single item from that box. And I have a full Rubbermaid tote, like the, you know, you know what Rubbermaid tote is. That is full of items that I believe will bring me at least $15 and higher per item. And at this very moment, I am $123.10 in the profit, not including any of those sales that you guys saw along the way. So I think that this was a great project. I think uh, if you have the storage space for these bins, if you have the buy, sell, trade stores, I do think there's profit to be made. Maybe you just have a bins near you and you can get your items for a dollar or less. Uh, I hope that you learned some of the brands that these buy, sell, trades are wanting from you. I definitely learned that Play-Doh's seems to enjoy all of the Target brands, whether it's Wild Fable or Universal Thread. I thought that some of those were geared more towards the older crowd, younger crowd, but they took all of it. 
And yeah, I will I buy another 200 pound box? I already did. It's on the way to me right now. And um, I, from what I'm seeing, it seems as though even though I just purchased this box last month, the Target items are starting to slow down. It seems that we're getting back to how they used to be, which is positive news. And you can still do these types of things because you are still going to have some of the lower end brands. And honestly, if you are somebody that just needs inventory, you could list almost everything that comes in these boxes and you're going to get around 300 pieces in my experience. I think I've ordered six of them. It always seemed to be right around 300. So please, please on your way out, give me a thumbs up. This video took me quite a while to put together. I hope you learned something. That's my goal here with this channel is that I'm helping the community learn some things. I learn all of my reselling things from YouTube and um, you know, maybe I give you a little bit of entertainment now and then. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.